Oh, by the way, yeah, the meeting will be recorded. <laughs> They're storming the doors. All right. Well, it is Friday, the 9th of July, and we'd like to welcome you all to the Friday Art Talk, uh, which is a, uh, a child of the Friday Art Walk, which we'll go into a bit later. Um, before we get into our discussion, I would just like to thank you all for attending this um, Friday Art Talk, second Friday Art, Art Talk, especially the panelists who's taken the time to share their work, their inspiration, and their, and their lives with us. So it's such a blessing to have people so generously offer this valuable individualized information. We have to pay the bills. So first of all, we'd like to thank Flax Art and Design in Oakland and also Alameda Municipal Power for sponsoring this section. Um, our panelists will get, get gift cards to shop at Flax after the panel is done. And we would also like to inform you that the artist's information will be available on FridayArtwork.com. If you check the website, you will find um, the information about all the panelists we've interviewed or who've sat on the panel. Um, going further into the notes, this show will be recorded. So if you are in the audience and you don't like your face to be shown, just um, turn off your camera. Um, we would like to record it so that others who don't uh, participate in the live event can catch up with it later. Like I was saying to the panelists, we are making history in Alameda in California in the world by holding the, these um, art panels. With that being said, I would like to welcome a wonderful panelist. We have Jenna Countryman. Uh, uh, Jenna, how, to, how do I pronounce your last, your last name? Uh, just Jenna Countryman Morrow. Okay, Jenna C Countryman Morrow. Uh, Stephen Yu, did I get that right? And uh, Raul de Maurice. Cr wonderful. Great. So with that being said, I will have to wing it over here. By the way, I'm Victor and I'm your host for, for the panel. And I would like to thank um, ArtPush for putting this together. The wonderful group at ArtPush.org put this together. I will be interspersing announcements here and there just to make sure you're well informed about where we're coming from. Okay, so that being said, I will start with you, Jenna. And uh, so sorry to drop this on you, but trust me, we have a wonderful audience, really lovely people. And tell us a bit about yourself, um, where you're from. Sure, um, so I am a Bay Area native, um, mostly East Bay, La Mirinda area. I did, I lived in San Jose when I was really little, spent some time in Florida in high school and college for my dad's job um, and came, came right back the minute I, I could <laughs> for grad school. Um, and I've lived, lived in Alameda for about 10 years. Um, I live here with my husband who's back there um, and, and our, our lovely cat who, will, who might make an appearance at some point, I'm sure. Um, and I, I've been doing art forever, but uh, my main Thing that I do is actually I'm a musician. I, I play flute, um, and I and I teach flute. So art is is I'm kind of doing both. So it's I'm I'm half half. Uh, but that's that's the quick version of me. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. I'd love to hear more about that that intersection between um, musical art and visual art. So that will come up in one of my questions. All right, we'll move on to Stephen. This is by order of by screen, so don't judge me. Uh, Stephen, you, um, same question. Uh, tell us a bit about yourself, um, where you're from. You're muted. <laughs> Sorry about that. It happens okay. to the best of us. I think I muted myself and Jess was, was like, thank God. Um, no, but uh, um, yeah, I was originally born in Taiwan. Uh, came here when I was uh, six, been basically in Bay Area for, uh, for a while. Moved to LA a little bit, um, decided that it was just not where I really wanted to be. And then uh, moved back up and um, now I'm freelancing, uh, work on my comics and I teach illustration at a high school. So my life is good, can't complain. Love it, love it. Thank you so much, Stephen. Sure. And moving on to Raul, same question. Um, who are you? Where are you from? <laughs> He's also muted, so we'll take a five minutes. Um... Okay, sorry about that. Uh, uh, so I'm, I am from Mexico City. Um, 
I've been in the Bay Area for maybe uh, 19, 20 years now. And uh, I am mainly a musician. I've been doing music for most of my life. I'm a bass player. I'm still doing music. Uh, but um, in a way, I've been kind of back and forth with making music and writing music and also uh, making art and you know, kind of back and forth. But in the last uh, four or five years, I've been more involved in, in the uh, the art scene and doing more and more art. And um, uh, I'm also in Alameda as well. Uh, just uh, moved um, this year, last year, I think. Um, but I've been in Oakland, San Francisco, Hayward. And uh, uh, so I'm here now. My life is good as well. <laughs> I love it. I love it. it. It's funny because um, the confluence of these discussions is always there's a thread that comes through. And in this one, we have two musicians and it's, it's random. I promise you it's random. I didn't say, well, let's have some music tonight. Um, <laughs> but great. So let's see how that works out um, because this is your space. I just want to make that absolutely clear before we go into the questions. So feel free to take it wherever your spirit takes you. Right, back to Jenna. What inspired the piece in the book? Um, so I have been doing a lot of um, pieces on, on wood, like the one that, that I have that I did um, for the book uh, with animals. Um, and usually uh, most of my other ones are just an animal and a, uh, a word bubble and they're usually saying something either supportive like you're brave or you are wonderful or something like that or something supportive in a snarky way um, usually with the swearing um, but this one obviously is one of the, the more nice ones um, and this one actually this is the only one that's hanging in my house um, because um, it was actually a, a direct reaction to um, this fair we have some feral cats in the neighborhood um, as happens around Alameda. <laughs> and uh, one, one of them is now, um, one of the ones that we were taking care of a few years ago when I made this, um, she is now our indoor cat. Um, she also, she would hang around with her dad, who is the cat in this picture, we called him Alba. Um, and he, he never came inside, um, but, and he, he was very skittish, he would run away from us. Um, but eventually after a lot of work, one day he started kind of rubbing up to us and he really, he just, he like melted and he like, he just leaned over and was like, oh my gosh, the ear scratchies. And still he would kind of freak out sometimes and be like, oh, humans. Um, but he still, you could tell that he wanted to be loved. Um, and unfortunately after probably a year of, of um, spending time with these cats, um, we could find him for a few days and it turned out that he had had uh, a medical emergency that was not fixable um, and he was picked up by um, the Friends of the Alameda Animal Shelter and humanely euthanized. And when they told, when I called, because we were looking for him and they told me what had happened, I just really broke down. You know, he wasn't even really our cat, but so it kind of surprised me um, how much it hurt. And this was just my reaction. Um, so I took a picture of him. He had that, he had a bent tail, <laughs> which is why his tail is so funny. Um, and, uh, and the rainbow, I think was just, you know, I just, I like putting paint on, on stuff, right. And just kind of letting out the emotions um, and, and ha having it be kind of a happy color or happy colors. Um, and for his wording, um, most of my other ones actually just say you are loved, but just the way that he was and how much he clearly really wanted to be loved. I wanted to just say like, you you were so loved, you are so loved. Um, and yeah, so that's that's kind of the whole thing. Um, yeah. All right. Um, so as I look at it, it's interesting because you mentioned that it was a temporary con connection, but nonetheless, it did hurt when, you know, with his um, a tragic um, journey. Could you speak more on that, on connection? Did, did that, um, inspire you to, to question our connections and um, whether the, 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 du the duration of them impacts how we feel about, about them? Yeah, I definitely, um, I was surprised at how, just how, how much I felt for him. Um, you know, it, it, 
it just, we only were with him like a year, which I've had many pets for much longer. And of course people for a lot longer. And yeah, it hit me a little harder than, a lot harder actually than I expected. Um, I, I was bawling on the phone to that, the poor, the poor woman who, <laughs> who picked him up. Um, and uh, I was really, it was really important to me um, to go to have him cremated, um, which is, I've never had one of my cats cremated before, um, but I, I did that with them. They offered it and I was like, oh, that's a really great idea. And it was really, so I actually have his little box um, in the house and I was, you know, you can bury them or, or do all kinds of things with them. But I, it was really important to me that he be in the house because I feel like he wanted to be with the humans. Um, wow. Very interesting. My thoughts on it were, I mean, it wasn't about him. When I read you're so loved, I, you know, I took it to be for me, the message is for me. So that's the beauty of, of art is that it becomes about the people who encounter it. It's, it's so, such a lovely story and so touching in so many ways. Thanks for making us uh, rethink our connections and um, the impact they have on our lives. We'll yeah. dive deeper into that one. I would love to explore more on that uh, when we talk about the quarantine, if that's okay with you. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much, Jenna. Appreciate that. All right. So we move on to Stephen. So Stephen, what inspired yes. Keith in the book? Um, so I grew up with uh, <clears throat> kind of the Asian American experience with martial arts. And I mean, you grow up as a nerd, like an Asian nerd. And that's like the first thing that you... Uh, <clears throat> I don't know, I guess you gravitate towards is uh, uh, martial arts, anime, and, uh, and comic books. And uh, I always wanted to blend cinema and sequential illustration together. <clears throat> and, um, and I just love so much of uh, um, the stuff that I grew up watching. So anything from like the Shaw Brothers to Jackie Chan films to in the 2000s, there was this uh, Korean wave of action cinema that came through and <clears throat> I don't know I just like that stuff and uh, I wanted to pay tribute to it so this is a, a one of the many series of paintings I have uh, dedicated to martial arts and kind of like this weird like impressionist abstract art uh, technique and so <clears throat> uh, I wanted to kind of I don't know, do like kind of a capture martial arts in a very interesting way um, that I, I myself hadn't seen before and I, I, I tend to like. Um, so uh, this whole series is called The Swordsman and uh, it's just a series of abstract uh, martial arts illustrations with, you know, swordsmen uh, fighting. Um, I don't know, I just like badass things. So that's, that's why I paint them. <coughs> um, and I don't know, I, I'm just one of those people like when I, when I paint and draw stuff, I tend to like to capture strength. Um, I'm, I'm not... <laughs> I have a hard time with sad stuff. Um, I, uh, any, any, anytime like a film or an art piece, it gets like really, uh, um, um, I, I, okay. So like, I do respect people who have trauma and they, uh, and they paint their trauma. Um, but for me, I know that could be a lot for me to take. Um, so <clears throat> I do the opposite, which is the stuff that does make me cry is triumph and victory and strength. Um, and it's just like capturing these moments of uh, just being strong. Uh, so that's kind of what the swordsman is like. It's kind of like an ode to like strength, I guess. Beautiful. It is a powerful piece. I must say it does exude that power in it, but also the stillness. For me, there's, um, there's a kind of um, an arrest on the time. The time is frozen almost as if he's um, freezing time in his, um, in his action, which is a contradiction. Um, is, this, is this a digital illustration? What's your medium? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah it was digital. Um, I basically, I got these brushes, like, uh, they were called Kyle, Kyle's brushes. Um, and a friend, <clears throat> a friend had uh, uh, um, sent it, uh, you know, sent me some, uh, some of the, the, the brushes and I was just playing around with it. And then all of a sudden I just, you know, I developed this piece from this, this experiment and I did several more too. Um, so I don't know, I, I just, 
<clears throat> I've done uh, a lot of freelance work and a lot of the work is a little more tighter. They want the lines to be clear. So I do a little more line work. But when it comes to like painting, this is where I feel like I can be free. I could just do whatever I want and, you know, kind of tell people to fuck off and this is how I want to do things. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Awesome. Um, by the way, as Sarah and Dave um, uh, commented that they love the kinetic energy in this, you can see him about to move. Um, Yolanda commented, I just like the badass things, so I paint them. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. That's, a, that, that's an awesome piece. It, and, and about the swords, could you speak a, a bit about the color choices? Yeah, um, so <clears throat> um, a lot of the, the color choices here were uh, influenced by uh, Chinese cinema. Uh, if you look at the Swordsman, I think it's the Swordsman 2 with Jet Li. And then uh, there's stuff like the Chinese Ghost Story series. If you look at, uh, um, what's another one? Um, but during the 90s, Hong Kong cinema had, uh, it, it was just really strong. They were coming out with all these movies. That's why we, we here in the States, we know so much about Jackie Chan, Jet Li, Donnie Yen, and all those guys, because that was from Hong Kong. Their, their film industry exploding in the 90s. And so <clears throat> a lot of those colors were always like, in those films, there were just all these like really deep saturated reds, blues, purples. Um, and I just thought it was really amazing and I wanted to capture that. Um, but then they were always like, they were always smoky and rugged too. So I kind of like, I like the hard edge of, of uh, how, I don't know, certain like films and paintings look when they're really raw. But then I don't know. Um, but I guess I, I try to like add like this like I don't know what you call it this sheen of uh, uh, the softness, the soft texture to it, just so you know, kind of like it beautifies the uh, the brutality. I guess is what I'm trying to do. So wow. All right, it gets deeper as you talk more about it because now we're talking about beauty and brutality. We're talking yes. about power and emotion. And also history is layered with that history, historical base of um, the film. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for that, Stephen. We'll jump back into that way. And I would love to talk about power, strength, and um, uh, enduring hard times, if that's okay with you. Sure. I hope I'll remember all this. Okay. Um, thanks so much. And now we move on to Raul. Um, Raul, yes, what sir. inspired the piece in the book? Uh, that piece, um, well, I, um, back in, uh, when I was uh, in my late teens, I, uh, I joined a band that was a heavy metal band. So um, at the time I was reading a lot of uh, uh, all kinds of uh, horror and novels, literatures and all kinds of uh, uh, books, you know, and I came across uh, one of uh, uh, Edgar Allan Poe's, um, or the one, the only one novel that he wrote. And um, then after that, I, I loved it so much. But then after that, um, in my band, there was all this, uh, uh, most of the members were very uh, into this guy, H.P. H. Lovecraft, which is the writer also kind of like on um, uh, Edgar Allan Poe type of thing. And um, so I read this uh, book, were uh, this little guy, his name is uh, Cthulhu, and um, he's uh, a fictional uh, cosmic entity. And but the book is uh, supposed to be kind of you know uh, horror, that kind of uh, 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 stuff. So he's supposed to be a big uh, monster, octopus, dragon, humanoid kind of uh, thing. Uh, that lives in the ocean, right? But I wanted to make my version of it, and then my version, he is uh, a baby Cthulhu. And so, you know, in order to put the the ocean in, in with him and and a, a boat, you know, because he you know sinks boats and all that. So I put it in a in a bathtub with bubbles playing with the bo uh, boat toy. And so, so, and I made a, um, I actually made a whole series of these guys. Uh, I have uh, Moby Dick, uh, the Loch Ness Monster, and the Yeti. 
and I have a few more coming up as well. But these are the the, the first few I made, um, and this actually was my first one. And I'm making the all these uh, creatures, uh, well-known creatures, um, but I make them into into a baby. So, yeah, pretty much inspired by 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 uh, by the book, uh, the Call of Cthulhu. That's the name of the book. Awesome. Awesome. Could you speak more on why you why you reduce not reduce them but turn them into babies? Well, you know, I I've seen so many uh, um, uh, versions of or you know artwork um, on the the creatures, you know, especially this guy, and you know, always uh, beautifully done. A lot of really really good stuff out there. Really good artists uh, making their own versions, and and it's usually it, it you know it's the the monster looking kind of scary kind of uh, uh, thing just like in, it's supposed to be in the book right but um so I just kind of want I wanted to make them I wanted to make it different and I was like you know this guy was a baby at some point you know <laughs> so so I figured I'd just make it into a baby and just have fun with it you know, I actually made this guy on, on other versions which is more on the on the scary side uh, of, of it but um, I just I just wanted to make them into a baby, and like I said, uh, uh, that inspired me to make more of these creatures. And instead of making them like they're supposed to be, I, I made I made them into like babies. Very interesting. I also sense a sense of humor here. No pun intended. Is is that right? You, do you, how how does humor play into your work? <laughs> Say it again. How does humor play into your work? Um, you know, I'm, I'm <laughs> I, uh, I don't, I guess I don't think about being funny and make it funny. I just, I just go for it. I just make what I, what I think, what is in my head at the moment. And, and I only know that it's either funny or, or curious or, or cute and creepy and cute, which is what I get from, you know, people who, who tell me what they see. Uh, and that's sometimes they think it's, it's, it's cute or funny and they laugh. So that's, that's only it, you know, when I know that, you know, it's, it's kind of funny, but <laughs> I don't think about it. I, it just, I just do it. Awesome. I don't know if that answers your question. Yes. Yes, it does. It, <laughs> it, it certainly does. A uh, comment from Sh uh, Cheryl in the in the chat. She says, "I love this piece. Makes me want to stay connected, intrigued." Very <laughs> awesome. I, I feel the same way too. It, it's it's got um, a, a, an enchanting an enchanting factor about it. You just you get glued onto it. Very mesmerizing. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Thanks Thank for sharing you so that. I'd, I'd love to go more more into your creative process. Um, uh, within the pandemic uh, for the next question, just to prep you for that. Sure, absolutely. All right. All right, we'll jump back to Jenna. All right, so we've been through a tough year and um, how has this previous year impacted you, if, if at all? Okay, she's muted at the moment. There we go. Okay. Um, so COVID has been interesting <laughs> um, for everyone. Uh, lockdown itself, um, I think would have had other things not happened, would have resulted in me actually getting a lot of stuff done, maybe not being able to go out and, you know, go to um, our shows and, and share it. Um, but uh, what happened with me, unfortunately, was so going into COVID, uh, my husband actually had heart surgery um, and we and has had some, he's been dealing with um, side effects from that ever since. And around, right around lockdown, it was a month after lockdown, um, he was in the hospital for that and I found a lump. Um, and it turned out to be two lymphomas. Um, well, I might actually cry a little bit. Um, <laughs> um, and so I didn't get to do all the art that I would have liked to have done um, because I was dealing with, you know, first it was just anxiety of figuring out what's wrong. Um, and then it was, okay, what are we gonna do? What's the prognosis? And then it was dealing with chemo. And then 
by the end of so December. Um, I, well, in December, we found out that the chemo had gotten one of the cancers, but not the other one. So then we were gonna go into a stem cell transplant. So I tried another chemo and then that only kind of worked. So they can't do the stem cell transplant. So I had to do something called CAR T, which is my, that's my lovely medical bracelet, um, which is like a, it's a newer, it's only five years old. Um, and it's a, a immune system booster. They, they took my T cells out and they injected them with a virus and put them back in. And so I've since, since that was March um, and then it actually, it worked. Um, and starting, it was a month later, I got my next PET scan and I was in remission. Um, so since then I've started to be able to be more functional again. Um, so it's interesting how my life has just kind of lined up with COVID. Um, as things were locking down, I was becoming less functional. And then as things have opened up, I'm becoming more functional again. Um, one of the biggest things that I, that was different for me because of, I think both COVID and cancer, um, was that I have, as someone who used to not post on Facebook, used to, I didn't like social media all that much. Um, I needed connection. Um, even if it wasn't COVID, I wouldn't have been able to see people because I was immunocompromised um, and because I wasn't well. Um, and I've, I'm, that has changed dramatically. And so I feel much more comfortable um, sharing my work online with, um, especially on my Facebook rather than just my Instagram. Um, and yeah, it's just, it, life is very different uh, after COVID. Mm. And, and so, so you, you, you spoke of a yearning for connection. Um, how does it feel to you when people react to your work and the messages that you put through there? What's the, what's the gift back? What do you get back from that? Um, one of the things that I do that I share a lot is um, I do pet portraits actually. And I love talking to people about, cause they'll send me pictures of their pets and they'll just share about their pets. And I just like hearing about their lives and lives and, and the love they have for their pets. Um, and with my non pet portrait stuff, um, you know, I kind of mentioned before, it's, it's kind of funny. Um, it's meant, meant to be funny and it's also meant to be supportive. And I just, um, it's really important to me to like, put out positive vibes into the world. Um, and I feel like when you do that, you get them back for the most part, you know, not, not entirely, but um, yeah. Wow. Yep. That is pretty moving because as you're speaking, I it just came to me that artists are human beings. Usually we, we looked at as creators, they are artists and therefore we, we're not looked at as people who go through all this stuff. But the beauty of it is that at the same time, we're just giving to the world. You know, you, you give these beautiful messages. I mean, you can't look at a message that says you're so loved and feel like crap, you know. Right. You, got, you gotta be in a dark place not to receive that. So thank you for, for, for sharing that. Um, and also for, for sharing your story because a lot of people have gone through a lot but have not had the channel to share that. Yeah. So we really appreciate you taking the time and being so vulnerable in sharing such an intimate um, part of you. Cats will never mean the same, same to me again. You know, it's, um, it's deeper, it's more intense. Thank you, Jenna. Is there anything else you want to add to that? No, I think I'm good. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Human connection, so powerful, so, so healing, so, so beautiful. All right, um, we'll move on to Stephen. So Stephen, uh, how, how was the pandemic for you? Um, you Stephen? Yeah, uh, oh, I, I'm gonna piggyback off what Jenna was saying. Um, I think in the beginning, um, so I had a buddy tell me, he goes, uh, quarantine's great because uh, we as artists have trained for this all our lives. Meaning that, you know, we're pretty big introverts. Um, and I thought for the first, couple of weeks I thought yeah that's pretty badass and uh, I'm gonna take advantage of this as much as possible and then it was about third weekend I was lonely and I didn't realize how lonely I, I was feeling and um, as much as there's a danger that artists have and I don't think this is talked about a lot and um, 
especially in the entertainment industry when you're working uh, on storyboards and concept art, there is this zeitgeist of working yourself to the point of being a master and everyone will love you. But unfortunately, that's just not true because there's also a large percentage of people who don't give a crap about what we do. That's the reality of it. You know, um, there's, uh, you know, all those uh, you'll see in the in, in those films, they'll say like special thanks to or whatever. And they'll say like the, the following artists, you know, art department, and they'll list down a, a bunch of names. Um, unfortunately, the, there's regular people who have better things to do than to recognize those names. You know, it, it's it's guys like me and maybe, you know, my, my friends who worked in that will look at the names. Oh, well, yeah, that guy's awesome. Yeah, I know that guy. But other people don't care. They just don't care. And um, I thought during quarantine, I'm going to buckle down. I'm going to do all these things. And I'm not saying that it's not important to strive for something, but it's very important to connect with people. Um, and I realized all this thing, that, all this stuff that I'm doing on Instagram is pointless if I don't know the faces of the audience that I'm talking to. So, you know, it's nice to connect with Dave Sylvester and, 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 you know, everyone that I've talked to so far. It's like, you guys make it fun because I'll post something and if it's ridiculous, people are laughing at it or people get angry at me and they'll, they'll DM me and they go, you're an asshole or whatever. I go, ah, that's great. That's great. I'm connecting with somebody at least, you know, somebody has a feeling about that. But if I'm just doing art and, and it's just out there and, and I'm just trying to like show off to people, then I'm not that's not a thing. Um, so that's what I learned during quarantine. And that's what it, it, it's done for me. It's making me, it, it's made me see the other side of it, which is don't make this art. I mean, yes, make the art because you want to express, but talk to the people you're trying to express it to, too. I mean, that's the most important thing. And um, so I'm getting all emotional, like thinking about this, but uh, the fact that we're all doing this right now means a lot to me. Um, and I'm rambling like an idiot right now, but that's because I feel, thanks. Thanks for the <laughs> affirmation, guys. <laughs> but I feel, I feel great right now because the art was made so that we all could talk about it, you know, and not just my art, but Jenna's art, you know, Raul's art. This is awesome. And, um, so it sucks that we had to have quarantine. It sucks that, you know, COVID's around and that we have to do this digitally, but, um, but it's better because I think uh, once everything's done, we're just, we have to remember that this is why we do what we do. It, it's the connection behind it all. Um, and also another thing too is, uh, um, sorry, I'm a little rambling, but let me just kind of wrap up on this thought. Um, no, it's your time. <laughs> I was uh, against teaching for a while. I had taught uh, preschool for seven years and I, uh, uh, it was seven years in uh, and um, I think uh, the last year I was at the preschool, I saw this little girl that I had taught many, many moons ago, and she was riding on this bike, and she didn't look like a little girl. She looked like a, like a long, lean, like adult riding this bicycle, and that's when I said to myself, oh, I got to get out of this. Fuck teaching. Uh, forget all this. I'm going to go do something else, and I was chasing after this like rock star status in L.A., and that didn't work out because, well, you know, it has its own, it's, it's, it's his own economy, economic system there. So during quarantine, I really had to ask myself, uh, um, because uh, the company I was working at is shut down because all their clientele is from China. And I was like, okay, what am I going to do now? And um, it was at that point, I asked myself, what is it that I'm really trying to do? Because um, that feeling you get when, when an art director or your boss says, hey, Steve is awesome and not because of his art, but because he helps us save money. That's not what I want to hear. That's not what makes me awesome. And so I started thinking about these moments from teaching that were really beautiful. And, and one of those moments that I love so much is when a student tells you, thank you, uh, you're awesome. And, 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 you know, the parents are like, you really made our day and everything. I mean, it's just, it's so goddamn rewarding. Um, and uh, so anyway, since then I went back and teaching now I'm at a, uh, at a high school and um, the students that uh, graduated, I mean, I'm, I'm glad that I'm teaching them art. I'm, I'm glad I'm doing that. Uh, that, that is so worthwhile. To me. So. Wow. That is powerful. That is Paul. Thank you so much. Thank sure. you so much, Stephen. And thanks, Jenna, for setting the tone 
on this um, trajectory of meaning and and the power of connection. I, I I've got nothing more to add to that because um, what you said resonates with me so much. It's like, what am I doing in this world? You know, I mean, what's it worth? What's the end goal? And without each other, what are we? You know, so thanks, thank you both for, for, for those powerful sharings. And I just wanna say it's important that we have these talks because we got young people asking the questions, what's life about? What matters, you know? And do, do people go through, through what I'm going through? Yes, people, artists go through that. People go through that. So thanks, thank you both. Uh, Raul, we're on to you now. Um, Sorry, I, I am feeling your, your impact, both, both of you. So I'm a bit shaky at the moment. H how, was, how was quarantine for you? How did you, how did it impact you? Well, um, gotta say it, uh, it was uh, definitely difficult uh, in the beginning because um, I had a, uh, I had all kinds of uh, conventions and art shows um, uh, already set for for the year 2020, and so I invested uh, money and you know merch, you know prints and this and that, and uh, to do all these events. And um, so when that happened, basically. Uh, Everything, everything just went to shit. Just, uh, you know, I just had to like put everything away. Um, and luckily, um, like they were saying, as an art, as an artist, you know, sometimes uh, we're kind of used to being always, you know, in our, you know, bunkers, you know, or, you know. We don't sometimes we don't go out much because we're always you know uh in our studios or you know homes uh working on our on our, our art our projects right so um but the, this time was a little bit different because uh in a way um you know you, you have to stay home you have to figure out a way to uh stay uh safe you know maybe order groceries online you know get everything delivered um, luckily, I wasn't alone, so I didn't feel as uh, as lonely as like uh, Stephen said. You know, he felt very lonely. Um, and uh, luckily, uh, the galleries I, I was working with uh, they just kept doing uh, virtual shows, right? So, so basically, I kept making art, and you know, just sending the images for all these different galleries and just basically get myself busy creating art for all the shows, even though it wasn't in person or that I didn't have to send the works to the gallery. Um, I was still kind of busy making art. So in a way that was great because, uh, you know, I, I kept me busy and into doing what I love. And, um, and, and that part was great, you know, because I just, I just kept going and going and, you know, there was another show here and another show there. And, you know, I just, you know, kept being, you know, participating in all these shows, you know, um, and then you keep, and on the other hand, you hear uh, of fam family and friends and, you know, people we know that they had someone passed because of COVID, you know, and, and then you hear someone else the same story and then someone else and they just they just keep happening, you know, you know, and then till it happens to you or somebody in your family that passes away, you know. And so that was uh that was hard, you know. I try to just keep focus and just do my art, but uh, having to think about like, you know, it's <laughs> You know, and I also get really mad when I, you know, see people, you know, out there, you know, 
treating it like a vacation, you know, going out and, and, and uh, with the whole family, you know, to somewhere nobody's wearing masks, a mask or, you know, so that, that was very uh, upsetting as well, you know, and hopefully they're all okay, you know, but um, that, that, that was the part that was, uh, it was hard for me to understand, you know, how, how some of us are trying to, you know, trying hard to, 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 to not spread this disease and then other people just don't give a damn and they're just doing their thing and taking their own vacation and, you know, and I get it, they, they're, they're, you know, quarantine and they want to get out, but all of us wanted to get out, you know, all of us wanted to do the things that we were used to do. But, um, um, so luckily, like I said, um, I just being uh, in the studio and just uh, creating art and being part of shows, uh, 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 that was uh, that was what kind of kept me also going, uh, is creating, creating more. Uh, and also going into the studio once a week and, and, and record. So I was also doing uh, music, I was recording once a week. So I try to, I guess, keep myself busy doing the, the, the stuff that I love so that, so that I don't go, so I don't go crazy, right? <laughs> Being at home all the time. So, so um, I think, uh, I think it wasn't, it wasn't, it was hard, but, uh, you know, compared to the other people or other families and uh, who had a, a, a friend or family member not with them anymore you know i think i'm in a better place i'm, I'm good i think I'm, I'm okay better than other people um thank you Raul. um i would just like to sum this off by uh, a couple of uh, pointers that i picked up and and then we'll open up the discussion to for uh, for q a um there seems to be a, a thread of community and connectedness <laughs> that keeps us going and gives us a sense of value in our lives, but also something that we own, something that we do that keeps us busy, but we love that thing we do. So um, thank you for, so much for sharing that. And as a former teacher, and I think Stephen, you can relate, um, students all, often ask you, why am I doing this? What's the value of this? And I think we've just come up with answers as to what really matters, what keeps us going, what helps us go through struggles? I mean, while Rome is burning, we can buckle down and give the world a gift. Isn't that just so ironic that as we go through this harsh period, we have nothing to bear but gifts for the world. So thank you to the artists. And uh, before we go into the Q and A, uh, why is Jenna, why is the kitty upside down? <laughs> <coughs> Um, so it's kind of, I think Yolanda's answer was actually mostly right. Um, it was partially just a composition thing of the picture that I was working from was set up in such a way. And I wanted to do the, the word bubble in such a way that I was, it just fit better, but I think more unconsciously, um, because it's a memorial piece rather than like my other pieces where all the animals are generally they are upright. Um, I think that was just a, I mean, you know, I felt like the world was a little bit upside down because he passed away. Um, and I think that's not, not so conscious, but I think that's part of it. Wow. Wow. There's power in that. I, I, feel, I don't know if others feel this way, but the more we talk about a piece, the more it comes alive and has more meaning. Right now, you just said the world was upside down. You know, I mean, imagine all the kids whose lives were turned upside down these lovely creatures and that's what I see in the cat like these delicate gentle lives who had to work with this and all they had was our word to lean on and in the picture is the words that are supporting the powerful beautiful I love that thanks so much all right so now we go into the Q&A but before we do let's um just get a word from our sponsors so we do want to thank Flax once again. Don't forget us because the quarantine is over. Flax Art and Design have been so generous to step forward and say, 
even though things are hard, we will support artists and they get they gave gift cards to our panelists. So Flax Art and Design, we really, really appreciate your gesture here. Along with Alameda Municipal Power, it's such a humane thing to look at artists who are always giving, always giving, never taking away from people, but giving gifts of beautiful visions to help people escape the, the hardships of life. So Alameda Municipal Power would like to give you a big thank you for that. Um, I would like to also mention that uh, we have a meetup group hosted by uh, Sarah Edge. She's um, in the discussion right now and it's called Art in Nature. So don't be isolated, make a trip down on, the, on Saturday, the 10th of July, that's tomorrow at 2.30 p.m. If you visit um, meetup.com and look for Alameda artists, you will find the link there. Um, this is also available on Friday Artwork, I believe, yep. And uh, finally, you can catch the show, past shows and learn more about tonight's artists at fridayartwork.com. This is going into the internet archives and I'm glad that we're all part of it because when we look back, we say, we did something when the world was upside down, we came through, we delivered. So thank you all for making this happen. It's such a beautiful thing. And um, now we uh, guests have the opportunity to make um, any art related um, announcements. So this is your, your time to pitch yourselves if you wanna share where we can find your work, uh, any upcoming shows, panelists, take it away. Um, hi. <laughs> um, my, uh, I, I noticed on the email, uh, I think made up of stories is one of my uh, IG accounts. Uh, that one was uh, for me, like analyzing like visual narratives. Uh, my Instagram is SYU artist. Um, so, um, and then uh, I'm currently working on a comic book right now. It's uh, Joan of Arc, uh, but if it was written by Tarantino and directed by uh, John Woo. Uh, so um, whenever you go to uh, Instagram, it's basically, uh, you'll see updates on the, the comic. Uh, I'm trying to do a crowd, uh, crowdfunding for it uh, in July, but I might have to push it to August because uh, some work came through. But anyway, SYU artist. All right. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, Raul and Jenna, in an, uh, any announcements? Uh, yes. Uh, so you said how people can see our work or find our events and stuff. Um, well, ba uh, um, I basically um, post everything on Instagram when I'm doing a, whether it's a show or, or like a convention. Um, uh, so that that way, I let people know where I'm going to be next, or where the next show is going to be at, and as well as um, also there's a link for um, for people who want to purchase my work uh, originals, and that leads them to my my online store. And I'm currently in uh, a show in uh, Brooklyn, New York. Um, also, the link is in in bio on, on my Instagram. And also have some works on uh, in LA, uh, the, the on Long Beach. The uh, gallery is called uh, Dark Art Emporium. I have some works there, um, and another gallery in LA, uh, Cactus Gallery, and also have some works there. And uh, everything else, uh, I'm going to be doing some uh, events in Alameda in the next few months, uh, which art in person. Uh, so for people to come, um, you know, and go to the, go to the event and, 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 and uh, we can actually see, you know, each other's faces because someone mentioned there that sometimes we don't, uh, uh, as artists, we just, we're kind of like secluded and we never, we don't usually meet uh, people, but um, that's a good way to, you know, meet uh, the artists, uh, you know, people who make the work that you like or, and vice versa, you know, the, 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 the people who, you know, follow you and like your work. So, so also that'd be, I'll be uh, uh, putting that on the, on, on my Instagram when the next event is going to be. Awesome. Thank you so much, Raul. Um, yeah. And um, artpush.org, the organization behind all this, um, did offer that you can send them the information and they'll post it along with your bio on fridayartwork.com. 
So if you have any information that you want to, um, uh, to, to be passed out to this community, please um, do contact guests always. Can you hear us, Victor? Sorry? Can you, can you hear, hear us? us? Yes, I can, but okay. please, be, please just shut up for a second because I'm still going. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on to you, Jenna. Um, uh, so I'm not doing a ton of stuff right now because I'm still somewhat recovering um, and I can't be around a lot of people yet, but um, I, am, I am planning to be at Punk's Parade in the Alfresco dining area um, by off of Webster. I think it's November 27th, so it's some, some ways away. Um, that's my next planned show. Um, if Carrier Con happens again, I will be there too, probably, um, but I don't know when that would be. Um, otherwise, I'm just, I'm mostly just doing pet portraits right now, um, but you can check out my uh, website, which is trifoxatops, like triceratops, but with fox instead of Sarah in the middle, um, dot com. And uh, I have an Instagram also under trifoxatops. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yes, Jess and Wes, I can hear you. I'll just like to round it off now before we open it up. Uh, uh, in the audience, we do also take your questions. So we will be opening it up. It will be a madhouse when all the, uh, when everybody's unmuted. So um, I'm a bit hesitant to do that. But, but before we do, I'll just like to thank you all for coming through to this, uh, this uh, art panel. It's such a wonderful community that's always giving, and I get so much from it. I've made some deep connections here, and I'm happy to announce that one of our friends, who's a longtime supporter of this um, art panel, will probably be joining us next month. And um, I won't say much more about that, but it shows the power of connection when we help other people feel like they're part of a bigger community, and we share the space without even losing anything but gaining from it. So thank you so much to everybody who made this possible. And um, it has been a tough time, but now we have to think about it. Do we keep it online or do we take it offline? It will be lovely to have this carry on in some shape or form. It is a quarantine baby, but um, what do we do with the baby? When now we have it, what do we do? With that being said, I've been your host uh victor and it's been more than a pleasure hosting this discussion be well thank you you can cut to that point all right